season, doing a lot of things. Isn't it,、uh, you know, you're meeting with your family and your friends. There's a lot of things going on. And at that, those times, it's so easy to forget things, right? Am I right? You know, sometimes you're preparing and, you know, maybe you're, you're thinking about the turkey or the lechon or, you know, some, your pancit or your noodles or you're thinking about the gravy. We're, we're gonna, we're, where do I got to put this? You're thinking about your presents. How many, I have to wrap this, I have to bring it here and there. And it's so easy to forget one little thing. Am I right? You know, sometimes you, you, you remember everything and that one thing you forget and you're, and, You know, maybe you're supposed to call somebody to order something for a pickup. And you, you, you remembered everything. The place is so nice. You know, you have all the gifts and you said, okay, I'm done. And then one thing, you were like, oh no, I forgot to call so and so. I forgot to do this and that. It just, you forget, right? For me, if you know me, I'm a very forgetful person. Unfortunately, if all the youth and all the young adults know that I'm very forgetful, even all the people who clean up, They know I'm forgetful because they'll start saying, Oh, Michelle, here's your stuff <laughs> every time. Because for me, I find that when I'm thinking about so many things, you know, I'm thinking about I want to talk to this person or I want to do this, I got to make sure I, you know, bring this, then sometimes I forget my things all over the place. They know that sometimes the youth will come up to me with my cell phone and just say, Ah,、uh, Michelle, here's your cell phone <laughs> or here's your bag. You know, a lot of them are, are probably laughing because they know that. It, you know, I forget all these things only because I'm thinking about so many things. And so this morning, as we're preparing, you know, as we're thinking about all these things for, you know, maybe our celebrations, and we're thinking about the future, we're thinking about celebrating and, and welcoming the new year 2015. I feel like God is reminding us that maybe we remembered everything, but today He's saying, don't forget the most important thing. Don't forget the Lord your God in this season, in this time. Throughout this 2000, 2014, as we're looking back and we're getting ready for 2015, he's, he's speaking to us this morning. I feel like the message this morning is He's saying, church, friends, Do not forget the Lord your God. And so we're going to open the, our Bibles and we're going to read this um, um, scripture. And let's look at Deuteronomy 8. And、um, it's, it's verses 1 to 20. So we're going to read the whole thing because we're just going to dissect this today and really just see how we can remember God, how, how God is reminding us not to forget Him in the midst of all these things that we're thinking about, that this is the most important thing that we should not forget. Amen? So let's look, let's read there. Deuteronomy 8, verses 1 to 20. Verse 1 Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land. The Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Verse 2 Remember the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. Verse 3 He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone. But on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man dis- disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks. Streams and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. Verse 9 A land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. Verse 10 When you have eaten and are satisf- satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you today. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when you, your herds and your flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. 
who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Verse 15, he led you through the vast and um, dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of the rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble you and test you that in the end it might go well with you. Verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth through me. Verse 18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that today you come, Lord, wanting to speak into our lives, into our hearts, that, Lord, you would bring transformation into our lives. So, God, I pray for every heart and every mind that we would be hungry to receive your word today, hungry to, to encounter you through, through, um, through the, that the word became flesh, Lord, and, and that the word, you are the, in the word. And so, God, we thank you that, Lord, today you want to encounter us through your word today. So I pray every ear would be open, every heart would be good soil to receive your word and so we just bless you and say holy spirit do your work do unique work in each and every heart and every mind god today so we bless you and we say thank you in jesus name we pray amen so some of you may be familiar with this passage um, of course, it's after the Israelites had, is, had um, been delivered from slavery. It's after they'd be, been delivered from captivity. As you know, the Israelites were in captivity um, in Egypt. And, and so God used Moses to deliver them, deliver his people. And so this is after, the, after even the 40 years of wandering. And the Lord has already taken them out. And he's, um, he's began to speak, through, um, speak to them through Moses. And he was, he was you know, after all the, the mirror that they have seen after you know God uh, had miracles you know the Red Sea this is after all of those things and God was reminding them that not to forget him he was reminding them that hey I have a promised land for you I have great things in store for you and so he was reminding them in this passage in this scripture that they should the Israelites should not forget the Lord their God and so as we continue to look into the verses this morning, until as we look into the scripture this morning, it's a reminder to all of us as he, as God reminded the Israelites, he's reminding us today that, you know, in this season, as we are, we've we're finishing off our year. We're looking into 2015. We're preparing that we should not forget the Lord in our lives. You know, God has been, just like the Israelites, faithful to take us through many things. Maybe it's our, the whole year or even in our past, our lives. He's been a faithful God to take us through all these things. And he has more things for our future. But he's reminding us this morning that we should never forget the Lord our God. Tell the next person beside you, don't forget the Lord. You know, friends, if, if, we're, if we're to be honest with ourselves, how many of you, you know, you don't have to answer, you don't have to raise your hand, but if you can really ask in your heart, how many of us, you know, even in this season, just these past, you know, couple of days in, in the holidays, how many of us have truly remembered God? How many of us have truly remembered the Lord, our God, in, in, even in this past little while? How much more in, 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 in the whole year? You know, it's like I was saying in the beginning before, sometimes we can remember all the things. And yet there's still some things that we can forget. You know, sometimes we can remember all the toys, we can remember all the clothes, we can remember, you know, all the things in our work. But sometimes what if we forget the one thing that really matters? We can forget God. And so this morning, that's why God was speaking to the Israelites and warning them. He was saying, you know what? I've done this and we've, we've been through this. We've celebrated this. You know, you've gone through so much stuff. But I want you to never forget the Lord your God. This morning is a reminder for us. Don't forget the Lord your God, church. You know, we... Um, if, if we don't want to forget the Lord your God, we're going to look today at some keys that in ways that we, it, it can help us 
remember God. Amen? If we don't want to forget God in our lives, we want to remember God in our lives. So we're going to look at some, a few keys that we can look into these verses of what, how God was speaking to the Israelites and how God can speak to us to remember the Lord our God. All right, so number one, if we look at, um, you know, verse, I have a couple verses here, verse 2, 15, 4, 16 to 18, and 5. Um, we're going to look at those individually, but if we remember that, the first way that we can really remember God, if we don't want to forget God in this season, we don't want to forget Him in, in our lives, we can remember God firstly in our past. So let's look at verse, verses, verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you, to test you in order that to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. So you see, in verse 2, God is charging the Israelites to remember him through all the things that they went through in their 40 years of wilderness. Look at verse 15. He, um, um, he's saying, he led you through the, he's telling the Israelites, he led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of the rock. You see, friends, God was reminding them he was a faithful God. Never, he never left the Israelites despite sometimes their disobedience. He was reminding them to remember all these 40 years of his faithfulness. In the same way, church, in the same way, friends, we can remember God's faithfulness in our past. We can remember what he did in every single year of our lives, in every season that he took you through, in all the things that he do uh, did, not only in 2014, but even in our previous years, we can remember God in our past. We remember him even in our every circumstance that we've been through. You see, verse 15 is reminding the Israelites when he's saying, um, reminding the Israelites, even every circumstance, every situation they faced, God led them through. God led them out of it. Some of the hard times that they faced, you see, the, the verse says, some of the vast and dreadful wilderness, the venomous snakes and scorpions, you know, even the times that they needed miracles. And in the same way, church, maybe in the seasons of your life, you know, some of them may, might have been easier, but some of them might have been harder. That you face some situations that have been like the, the, uh, the, felt like it was a thirsty land, felt like it was the wilderness for you. And you, it, it, God is reminding us, remember how he took you through every situation, every circumstance. Maybe the, it felt like there was some venomous snakes in your life. You know, there were scorpions or things coming out of nowhere where it felt like it was a hard thing for you every season. And God is reminding us that even through those things, we can remember how he took us through. He led us through those times, just like the Israelites. He led them through the wilderness. He led them through the desert. He led them through even amidst the scorpions and the snakes. He, he, he drew water out of rock. So how can, how can friends, how can we, you remember God in your past? It's a question for all of us. How can I remember? You know, you might be ask, ask yourself that question. God, how can I remember you in my past? One way is, of course, that we can remember, especially just like the Israelites, how God already brought us out of captivity. He brought us out of our slavery. You know, just like the Israelites who were brought out of their slavery, we can already remember and rejoice and thank God, saying, God, wow. You brought me out of my captivity. We can remember how we were lost, but now we are found. We can remember, you know, sometimes if it, the moments in our past where we saw we were really bound. We were bound by things of this world, maybe bound by, you know, sin or, th or, or, or bondages in our lives. And, and, and we can remember how God has set us free. Amen? How he brought us from from bondage to freedom, how he brought us from darkness to light. It's time to remember that we would not forget how God has been so faithful in our lives. We no longer have to live our lives in captivity. He set us free. We can also remember how God has provided for us. If you look at verse 4, 
The Bible he, uh, is saying, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. He's reminding the Israelites. And let's look at verse 16 to 18. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and my strength uh, um, the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me, but remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms this covenant, covenant which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. You see, God was or, um, urging his, his people to remember that he was faithful to the Israelites to provide for them, to make sure that they had everything that they needed, that he was enough. In the same way, as we look upon this past year and, and the previous years, we need to be reminded that God has provided for us. We may think it was our own strength, but God was the one who gave us the ability to produce wealth. He was the one who gave us the help. He was the one who gave us the strength, the skill, the knowledge, the intelligence, the wisdom to work. He, he gave us, and, and that was, uh, the, he gave us the ability to provide food for our families. He also even gave us moments where um, he provided great breakthrough in our lives. Amen. How many of us, there was some great breakthrough that God has done in our lives that we ought to remember? Just like how God, for the Israelites, drew the, the water out of the rock. Remember how God supernaturally has taken care of you. Maybe he performed miracles before your own eyes, and it's time that we remember it was God. Maybe you got a bonus out of all, all, all of a sudden in your work when you really needed it. Or maybe there's money in the bank at the right time. Or maybe you got promoted. Or maybe somebody got healed in your family. Maybe, you know, a relationship was restored. You know, maybe there was great things that God has done in your life for this past year, or even the years before. And God is reminding us, hey, it was me. Don't forget the Lord your God. I was the one who was there, who took you through all these situations in your life. Don't forget, tell the neighbor, tell the person beside you, don't forget the Lord your God. Even in verse 5, he's, he's reminding us how, how God was even, loved us like a father. He was, you know, throughout this, throughout this time, the, the verse says, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord God disciplines you. You know, many of us, if you're part of CLC, there was a lot of discipline going on this year, even through the messages, because God was really putting order into our lives. And we ought to even remember His discipline. We remember, remember the Bible says that His rod and His staff, it comforts us. That even in the times of discipline, His rod, it comforts us because we know that God loves us, that He would discipline us. So in the same way, we can remember the years and remember how, how God has put things in order in our lives. You know, maybe there were some challenging moments where, you know, we didn't agree and we learned to submit. We learned how to obey. And really, God was disciplining us. And it's time to remember God. Amen? You know, it's amazing because some people, I know it's popular, they say, forget the past. You know? And I, I believe in some way, it, you know, it, it's good to not, rem, you know, hold on to the past too much. But in the same way, God is showing us today through his word that maybe we shouldn't focus on the past, but we need to remember God in our past. Amen? We, you know, because what God did is, in the past is part of the testimony of our lives. It's part of what he did in our lives. So we ought to remember, you know, sometimes you don't want to remember if you went through a hard situation. Maybe it's through, um, you know, I know we're, we're, we all face situations, right? We all face sometimes hard moments in our lives. Maybe it through our finances, in relationships, or even, you know, sometimes grieving if you lost a loved one. And it, it's hard, but, you know, even though if you don't, sometimes we don't want to remember anything about it. But God's reminding us, you know what, even if you don't want to, you know, you don't have to remember everything, just focus on that. But remember how God, remember God in it. Remember how God took you through those things, how he comforted you, how he, he, you know, how he was beside you, how he never left you, how he was your ever-present help in times of trouble. 
through your circumstances, through your challenges, maybe through your struggles in your, your relationship, your finances or your work, God was faithful to lead you through it. And he was faithful to bring healing and breakthrough in many areas. You see, the Bible says that one of the ways we should not forget the Lord our God because he was there throughout the years of our lives. And as we come to the end of 2014, let us remember what God did this year in our lives. Just like the Israelites, maybe your journey or your season wasn't too easy. Maybe it feels like so many years of wandering. Maybe there was times where you, you even maybe disobeyed God or, or had moments where you, you went apart away from God. And, and God is saying, you know, don't forget how he has pulled you in, how he's never left your side how he's desired to love you unconditionally, how he, he, he continued to provide for you. He gave you manna, just like the Israelites. He gave you clothes. He gave you food to eat, the ability to produce well. Remember how God has been faithful in your life, how he has loved you unconditionally. Amen? So we can remember God. If we don't want to forget God, we can remember him, of course, in all the things that God has brought us through just like the Israelites, amen? Not only that is number two, we can not only remember God, another key, instead of, in addition to remembering God in our past, we can also remember Him in our present. Let's look at verse one. See the, see the Bible says, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Let's look at verse 6 as well. The Bible says, Observe the commands the Lord your God, walking in obedience to Him and revering Him. And then let's turn to verse 10 to 11. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you today. See, friends, God is urging, if we look at these verses, he's urging his people to follow him and remember him by doing what he says now. We can remember him in our present by doing, being careful to follow every command that he's giving us when? Today. So not just yesterday, not just tomorrow, but we can remember God in our present by following and observing the things he wants us to do today so that we may live and increase and enter the land God promised. You see, if you notice in the verse, the verses observe and walk in obedience is a charge not to do it once. It wasn't just like the Bible didn't just say observe once one time. You know, it's a present tense verb implying that we should continue to observe God's commands. We should continue to walk in obedience to him. If you know the context of this passage, it was even after the, Moses gave the 10 commandments, you know, for the Israelites to begin to live by, to put order. And although I know we don't live but you know, by the 10 commandments right now, because of course we, or, or the 10 commandments alone, um, because we live by grace, you know, not under the law, but, you know, it's a charge for us still, when we look at the, these words, for us to obey the word of God and to walk in obedience and revere him. You see in the verse 6, it's saying, obey, walk in obedience and revere him. We can remember God by walking in obedience today, by following his word, by, by um, choosing to, to walk according to his plan and his purposes. Amen? So it's a question to us. How are you choosing to remember God today? Do you intentionally choose out to walk your life today with Him? Are you committed to knowing what He says, what He desires in your life every day? Let's look at John 14, verse 15. The Bible says, if um, Jesus was talking, you saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. So this is not just an Old Testament thing. Even in the New Testament, God was saying, if you love me, you know, you will do what I say. You will keep my commandments. 
You know, how do we even fear God in our present day? We can remember Him by revering Him, fearing Him in our lives. Not fearing in the sense where you're scared of God, but respecting Him, revering Him as our Lord and our Savior. Not only um, can we remember Him and choose to become thankful for the things in our past, but in our present, we can choose to remember God today by choosing to remember that He has plans for us today. That he desires that we can, he desires to do something in our lives that we can partner with him to accomplish our his purpose in our lives. You know, we talked about this before, recognizing that God is not just our savior, but he's also our Lord. And so we remember him. A way we can not forget the Lord is a way we can remember him is, is knowing that, hey God, you're my Lord, meaning I submit to you as my Lord and Savior. You know, that means he, he, he comes as a king, he comes as a Lord where he has dominion, there's an authority, there's, there's a submission that's involved where we, we obey what the Lord says, amen, that there's order. And so in this, you know, in the same way, we can remember God by submitting to his order, submitting to his lordship, by revering him as our Lord and our Savior, as our God, and, and, and his order in our lives. Amen? So not only that, we remember him in our, in our past. Not only can we remember him by every day choosing to walk out, to remember his commandments, to observe his, his laws, his decrees, to studying his word and walking that out in his life. But we can also remember God in our future. Let's look at verse 7 to 19. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig out, cop, dig copper out of the hills. You see, if we look at verses 7 to 9, we can see that God here was reminding the Israelites not to forget him because he had greater things in store for their future. He promised them the promised land. In the same way, church, in the same way, friends, we can remember God in our futures, that he has a promise for us. He, God has promises for our lives. He, um, and we are to remember him in our future. You know, sometimes we get so busy and so worried, so anxious about our futures because we forget the Lord in our lives. You know, a lot of times we want to take everything and put everything in our control because we forget that God has so much more in store for our lives, that God actually has promises that he wants to fulfill, that he has a purpose, he has a plan, he has a destiny, he has a will that he wants to fulfill in our lives. And a way we can remember God is, is remembering that he has a plan, he has promises for us, that he wants to accomplish his purpose in our lives. Let's look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 19, 21. It's a familiar verse. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. God desires to be part of our future. He desires that, you know, um, it's his purpose and plans that prevails. No matter what we do, if we try to do all these things, you know, we need to remember God because it's his purpose that prevails. Even if we have all these plans and all, you know, maybe you want to get rich and do all these things. I'm not saying that's bad, but remember God because he's the one. His purpose is the one that will prevail in your life. So that we don't have to worry if we really remember God. Just as he made a covenant with the Israelites and their ancestors that there's a promised land, that he wants to bring them into this land of milk and honey. He promises, he has promises for your life too. That there's things that God has, to, you know, he wants to prosper you. He wants to give you a hope and a bright future. That's what the Bible says. However, we need to remember God in our future. We need to commit our plan to him. We need to commit our way to him. Look at the, what the Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. 
You know, it's time that we remember God in our future that, you know, sometimes we just try to do our own thing and we don't remember God. But God's saying, my purpose is the one that we will prevail. So if you commit your plan to me, it will be successful. Because it's my purpose in your life that when you commit to my purpose in your life, that's what is going to be established. That's why it will be successful. Because it's his purpose for us. Amen? He has planned great things for you. And we are to remember God in our lives. You know, imagine he, he, he's, he has purposes for you. He, you know, he, he, he wants to increase you. He wants to prosper you. How many of you want that? Amen. I want that. You know, how many of you want promotion? How many of you want, you know, and this is not just like a prosperity gospel that I'm just throwing out things. But really, that's why when you say you, you commit, when you commit to God, your plans, you commit to him your way, you will see truly God work out in your life, that the favor of God will be upon your life, that you will see increase because, you know, he desires that his children will be blessed. Amen? He has promised us an inheritance. He has promised us great things in our lives, just like the Israelites, you know, the land, you know, to provide for us, to do that it would be flowing with milk and honey. And so the same way God's promising, you know, in our lives, he wants to bring restoration in your family. He wants to bring wholeness. He wants to bring healing. That's why he said even pray that, that um, pray uh, thy will be done on heaven as it is in earth, that everything as it is in heaven, that it would be done on earth, that, you know, there's no sickness or disease in heaven. Pray that that's going to be done on earth. This is my desire for you, that you would not be sick. That's why I came. And so he has promises for your life, for, you know, in 2015. He has promises for our future, for our 2015, that he wants to do great things in our life. We should remember him in committing our way to him, committing our plan to him. You know, we are to seek him first. And so let's just quickly take a look. This is the last verse. Um, let's quickly take a look at verses um, 10 to 14. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you today. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and your flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud. And you will forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You see, in, this ver you see, in the, these verses, God's really telling his children, hey, remember the Lord, your God. Do not become proud. Maybe you, you, even in your year, maybe it wasn't a year of challenge. Maybe it was a year of blessing. Maybe, you know, or if it, whether it was a year of blessing, whether it was a year of, of great things or a year of challenges, God is saying, remember the Lord your God. Do not become proud because it is me who brought you, me who saved you. In the same way, it's, it's, it, in, in our lives, in our seasons, you know, maybe you have faced some things. Maybe, you know, we have gone through great victories and, and breakthroughs. Maybe we're, we're, you know, we've got promoted and we have, we have enough. We have resources. You know, maybe we can even afford to buy um, investments in other places. And God is saying, hey, church, remember the Lord your God. Do not become proud in your heart. Remember him. Remember how he took you out of captivity. Remember, you know, that's why I love this song. When I think about the Lord, it makes me want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We ought to be like that, his children, where we can look back and say, God, thank you for your faithfulness. I cannot stand here today if not for your goodness in my life. I remember that I have all these things, but it's through you. You have given me the ability to produce wealth. It's through you. You have given me, you know, the promotion. You have increased me. You have given me the promotion. Or it's been through you that, Lord, even through the hard times, you have sustained me through, you know, sometimes where I, was, I, I felt like I had enough. You were enough. God, that even you provided. There was clothes on my back. My family had food you know my 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 kids had enough to eat 
And it was you who brought me through. We are not to forget the Lord. God is reminding us today that do not forget the Lord your God. That he took you, he, he brought you through, just like the Israelites. He's saying he led them through these 40 years in your life, even as a Christian, if, even if you're not Christian, God has been there throughout your whole life leading you through all these seasons of your life. And it's time that we remember our God, that we do not forget how he's been so faithful in our lives. That, and, and, and when we remember that, it's, it's our position that we can, that God will take us into greater things because we know it was him who provided it for us that he would bring us into our promised lands that he would bring us that the promises of god would be accomplished in our lives because we recognize god it's you that the purpose of god be, is be beginning to be fulfilled in our lives because we remember the lord our god he's an awesome god just like he was faithful to the israelites i'm going to tell you today he's faithful to us He's faithful to you today. He's a promise keeper. He will keep his covenant. So I want to encourage you today, as even as you're preparing for 2015, that God has promises for you. And as we commit our way to him, as we remember our way, let's not be proud in our hearts. It, whether you have gained a lot, whether you have lost a lot, remember God through your seasons. Don't forget, tell the person beside you, don't forget the Lord your God. It's time that we remember God in all that we do, in everything in our lives. You know, we were talking about at the beginning, there's so many things. You can be a forgetful person, but do not forget the Lord your God. You know, we can, and how we, 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 we can do that, we can remember Him in our past. When we look back, we reflect we can remember all the seasons that he's taken us through. Maybe we can remember 2015, how he's kept us, how he's, you know, he's brought us even from maybe our sin and, and the things that we went through out of our bondage. He's brought us through all those things. He provided for us, done miracles for us. Not only that, we can remember him not only in our past, but today that we can remember that he, 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 um, his laws to observe the things, he has purposes for us today, that he is, he is, his word, does, that we can follow him, obey him, that he's Lord in our lives. We can remember him in our present, in our today, in every single day of our lives, not just on Christmas or not just on, you know, on on certain times of the year when it's Easter or Christmas that we come and okay we remember God but God is saying for us to remember every day for us to remember him who he is in our lives that we observe his law we, we keep his commandments and lastly that we remember God in our future that we don't have to worry too much about tomorrow because just like the Bible says because he will take care of us that when we just commit to his way his purpose his promises for our lives will be fulfilled because he's a covenant keeper you know you saw that he made a promise to the israelites that they, they will go into the promised land and and surely enough he kept their covenant even through their disobedience because he promised that or their forefathers he promised that they, that's what would happen, that they would be delivered, and God fulfilled it. And so even in your years, even if it feels like a long time, God still has a promise for your life. He has a promise, promises over your life, and he, he desires to keep them. He desires to fulfill them. But friends, let us not become proud in our hearts. Let us commit our way to him. And let in the midst of busyness, in the midst of these preparations, in the midst of countdown, maybe you're, you're thinking about how much weight you need to lose or you're thinking about all, all the food and everything you need to prepare for another, the New Year's or things like that. Let's not forget the Lord our God. Amen? Amen.